It's a weird feeling when you know that someone in a position of trust is abusing that trust in the pursuit of an unspoken agenda, but that only makes it doubly satisfying if that abuse is eventually exposed for the world to see. This is the position that all of crypto and Cardano find themselves in right now. Ready? Let's go. Today, we are going to discuss this amazing memo from the prestigious Washington, D.C. law firm of Cooper and Kirk that explains exactly how the current administration is carrying out their Operation Choke Point 2.0 and exactly why it's so unconstitutional. If you can appreciate the secretary's intensely thuggish style sensibilities in this image, or if you're finding value in these videos each weekday, please consider delegating to the Army of Spies stake pool, ticker AOS. So Charles dropped a video today, and this was kind of an important video. It was about this memo from the law firm of Cooper and Kirk of Washington, D.C. The memo was called Operation Choke Point 2.0, the federal bank regulators come for crypto. To provide a little context, this is the website of the law firm of Cooper and Kirk. You can see the front page has this quote from the National Law Review that says, few firms in Washington, D.C. can lay claim to being as influential on a national stage as Cooper and Kirk. When you look at the bios of the lawyers at this law firm, you find a lot of graduates of Harvard and Yale law schools. I mean, a lot of graduates of Harvard and Yale law schools. So many so that it becomes pretty obvious this isn't just some random law firm. This is a really serious DC law firm. Here's the memo they wrote on Operation Choke Point 2.0. And I won't bury the lead here. If you come to the first actual page of the memo, they tell you who they are. Our firm successfully challenged Operation Choke Point 1.0, and it was brought to a halt. So this is the law firm that stopped Operation Choke Point 1.0, and now they're writing this memo, kind of on behalf of all of us in crypto, letting the world know that this is the same thing over again. But this time, it's crypto that's targeted. They say, recent stories in the financial press have uncovered a coordinated campaign by prudential bank regulators to drive crypto businesses out of the financial system. Bank regulators have published informal guidance documents that single out crypto and crypto customers as a risk to the banking system. Businesses in the crypto marketplace are losing their bank accounts or their access to the ACH network. We've seen that already. Suddenly and with no explanation from their bankers. We just, I think just last night, we talked about Kraken losing their, their ACH access. The owners and employees of cryptocurrency firms are even having their personal accounts closed without explanation. This pattern of events is not random, and we have seen it before. This is not the first time that federal bank regulators working with their state-level counterparts have abused their supervisory authority to label businesses unworthy of having a bank account and worked in secret to purge disfavored lines of commerce from the financial system. Beginning in 2012, the FDIC, the OCC, and the Fed carried out a coordinated campaign to weaponize the bank against industries that had fallen out of favor with the administration. In that case, it was gun stores, pawn shops, tobacco stores, payday lenders, and a bunch of other brick and mortar businesses. That was Operation Choke Point 1.0. They say 2.0 deprives businesses of their constitutional rights to due process in violation of the Fifth Amendment. Yes, this very seemingly very prestigious law firm that is full of Harvard and Yale Law School grads is saying that this is unconstitutional. Operation Choke Point 2.0 violates both the non delegation doctrine and the anti commandeering doctrine, depriving Americans of key structural constitutional protections against arbitrary exercise of governmental power. Yes, abuse of governmental power. I'll go ahead and say it like that. By leveraging their authority over the banks to acquire the power to pick and choose the customers who the banks may serve, the bank regulators have exceeded their statutory authority. Again, abuse of power. The bank regulators are charged with supervising the safety and soundness of the banks. Their effort to anoint themselves the gatekeepers of the financial system and the ultimate arbiters of American innovation and American economic life cannot be permitted to stand. I like where this is going, Cooper and Kirk. 
the federal bank regulators are also refusing to perform their non-discretionary duties when doing so will benefit the cryptocurrency industry. State state banks are statutorily entitled to access the Federal Reserve System, are being denied their rights solely because they serve the crypto industry. If you watch that channel, you know exactly who they're talking about. They're talking about Caitlin Long's Custodia Bank. The federal bank regulators are not free to pick and choose which statutory obligations obligations the duties uh, and duties they wish to perform there are actually a couple i'm kind of shocked there are a couple a uh, couple of uh little um little uh typos and things like that and and miss miss choices of words in this memo which kind of shocks me but they probably just pumped this out pretty fast because they think this is a pretty pressing thing and i think all of us in crypto would probably agree the federal bank regulators are evading the notice and comment rulemaking requirements of the Administrative Procedure Act by imposing binding requirements on the banking industry through informal guidance documents. See, they're they're going through and by bullet point, they're pointing out all of the reasons why this is illegitimate. Finally, the federal bank regulators are acting in an arbitrary and capricious fashion by failing to adequately explain their decisions, by failing to engage in reasoned decision making, and by failing to treat like cases alike. It is difficult to imagine a more arbitrary and capricious agency action than simultaneously placing a solvent bank into receivership, you know, they're talking about Signature Bank, solely because it provided financial services to the crypto industry while permitting insolvent institutions not tied to the crypto industry to continue continue operating. And here they get to what they really want to say. We therefore urge Congress to perform its oversight role and hold these agencies to account. In section four of this paper, we propose a series of questions that need to be answered. <laughs> so here we go. First, Congress should require the bank regulators to produce their communications with supervised financial institutions and state regulatory agencies. That would be interesting. Second, Congress should require the federal bank regulatory agencies to explain the basis for their conclusion that the safety and soundness of the financial system requires the insulation of the banks from blockchain technology. Also, please, please do that. Third, Congress should make clear to the federal bank regulators and all federal agencies that the notice and comment rulemaking requirements, the, the APA, the Administrative Procedure Act, are not optional. The requirements imposed by the APA are not obstacles to be evaded. Interesting, because this administration just accused the biggest crypto company, Binance, of this exact thing, evasion, in that case, not of the APA, but of some other regulations and statutes. Fourth, Congress should investigate the role of federal regulators in the decision by the NYDFS to shutter Signature Bank. Congress should also determine the FDIC's role in excluding bidders who wish to acquire Signature's digital asset businesses from the bidding process, because you probably already know Signature is being sold off, but guess what? You can't buy the crypto part of their business. That just has to go away. Fifth, Congress should investigate whether bank regulators are acting to squelch private, private sector innovation in order to clear the field of competition for the benefit of existing federally regulated banks or for a federal cryptocurrency alternative. That would be a CBDC. Cooper and Kirk is saying exactly what all of us in crypto have been saying for a long time. Granted, we didn't know about exactly what was going to happen with Signature Bank and uh, all of these crypto related things that are happening right now. We, I don't think anybody knew that operation choke point 2.0 was going to happen like this exactly, but these are exactly the kind of things we've been talking about since it happened. And this is exactly what we feared would eventually happen to crypto. This is a substantial and detailed document of 37 pages that's going to take the reader all the way through Operation Choke Point 1.0 and then explain why all of this is so illegal, as well as detailing exactly what the current administration has done to wage its war on the innovation of the blockchain. So you can see it all in these bolded parts of the document. So we don't have to get into too much detail. You can read this for yourself, but we'll just hit some of these bolded sections, which I think are pretty important and do a pretty good job of telling the story. One of the first acts of the OCC under the Biden administration was to kill a rule designed to ensure fair access to banking services. That would be a great thing to do if you wanted to get rid of crypto. As And then we have Jenny Yellen appointed Michael J. Shu as a deputy comptroller and announced that he would serve as acting comptroller of the currency. As Mr. Shu's subsequent statements stigmatizing the crypto industry have demonstrated, the Biden administration had selected a self-proclaimed crypto skeptic. So this is also a good move. Put a crypto skeptic in as the acting comptroller of the currency. 
Then we have the FDIC joining the anti-crypto party. On January 3rd, the Federal Reserve Board, the, Fed, the FDIC, and the OCC released a joint statement informing banks that the three agencies had safety and soundness concerns with business models that are concentrated in crypto asset related activities or have concentrated exposures to the crypto asset sector. So there we go. They are warning the banks off from the crypto industry right there. The banks feel the pressure to refuse to accept new crypto customers and to drop crypto customers. First, crypto businesses are being systematically and methodically cut off from the ACH network. As we just talked about, we've seen this just with, with Kraken just in the last few days. Banks are also reportedly being pressured to limit or terminate their banking relationships with companies in the crypto industry. Operation Choke Point 2.0 is targeting not only digital asset businesses, but also the personal accounts of individual employees of crypto businesses for termination. The commission issued staff accounting bulletin 121, which instructed those entities required to file reports that they must include digital assets held in custody among the assets and liabilities on their balance sheets. This is the SEC jumping in there. Uh, they started shuttering banks that serve crypto. We already know about that. There is reason to fear that this weapon has now been fired and that bank regulators have placed a solvent financial institution into receivership to punish it for failing to tow the administration's line on crypto. And of course, they're talking about all the things that we've we've discussed in this channel involving Silvergate Bank and Signature. The New York Department of Financial Services Superintendent Adrian A. Harris also sits on the Financial Stability Oversight Council and would surely have been well aware that the FSOC liquidity program would have obviated any risk of signatures failures. So Superintendent Harris is over the New York Department of Financial Services and they're pointing out she sits on the Financial Stability Oversight Council and she would have known that the liquidity program that would come into play, what was it? I, I think I heard it was 12 hours after Signature was shuttered by the New York uh, the New York Department of Financial Services. Just like 12 hours or 24 hours, some very short amount of time, they would have had access to that liquidity program. And so Signature wouldn't have had to fail. That's what um, uh, chairperson, oh, here they even talk about it. Former Representative Barney Frank, he was on the board of directors of Signature, and he we talked about it on the channel. He made a really big deal about the fact that Signature did not have to fail. They could have just, you know, they could have just given it another another twenty four hours, and they could have accessed the liquidity program that every bank basically in the United States was allowed to access. But Signature committed the ultimate sin of being involved with crypto. This crackdown on crypto is not only harming bank customers, but also is a violation of the FDIC's statutory obligations to wind down failing banks in the way that is the least costly to the deposit insurance fund. So you can imagine as they're winding down a bank like Signature, they have, an, they have a statutory obligation, an obligation of law, not of regulation, of actual law to wind down that bank in the way that is the least costly to the FDIC's deposit insurance fund. And surely forcing its crypto business to die is not the least costly way to do that. The federal bank regulators refuse to charter banks that serve the crypto industry. This is Custodia Bank. I'll be shocked if they don't talk about Custodia Bank right in this section. We won't take the time to go and comb through this section to find it though. Cryptocurrency is not a safe haven for criminals. And that DOJ can follow money through the blockchain. So they're saying the Department of Justice's 2022 arrest of individuals involved in the 2016 hack of Bitfinex, a virtual currency exchange, and its recovery of 3.6 billion in stolen cryptocurrency confirmed that crypto is not a safe haven for criminals and they can follow money through the blockchain. In fact, crypto is a terrible place to steal money because the movement of the money can be tracked basically forever until the fiat off ramp. I was actually among the victims of this 2016 hack of Bitfinex. So I was very happy to see those individuals get caught and very dismayed at how lame their social media presences were. I would much rather we have criminal masterminds robbing me, not the likes of these criminals be much happier with like a bond villain type criminal, something like that. The federal reserve has delayed resolution of the request from state chartered banks to access the federal reserve system. And here's when, where they get into custodia bank as predicted. 
The Biden OCC has announced that it will subject the provisional approvals granted under former acting comptroller of the currency Brooks leadership to heightened scrutiny. The agency's backroom war against crypto is unlawful and unconstitutional as well as arbitrary and capricious. Operation Chokepoint 2.0 is unconstitutional and violates the due process clause. And now they're going to go through some of those same arguments we talked about uh, just at, at the beginning of this document. Uh, they have a whole section here called Stigma Plus. Yes, this would be, they've done a great job of putting a gigantic stigma, stigma plus even, on crypto. The backroom war against the crypto industry violates the due process clause under the very same reasoning as the, the case they're talking about here, Constantino. They say reputation plus. Then they're going to get into that aspect of that case. Victims of Operation Choke Point 2.0 can, can also establish the, the elements of a reputation plus claim. I like this. They're laying out of the case law. They're laying out for, for companies in crypto. They're laying out the entire lawsuit. This memo is laying out all of the law necessary for any of these companies or banks or whoever who is suffering under Operation Choke Point 2.0 to challenge the current administration on this. Operation Choke Point 2.0 may violate structural constitutional protections. The federal bank regulators are failing to perform their statutory duties. They're exceeding their statutory authority. They are not performing their statutory duties. The Federal Reserve has no discretion to deny a state chartered depository institution's application for a master account. That's exactly what happened at Custodia Bank because they are a Wyoming Speedy Bank, a special purpose depository institution. The Prudential Bank regulators are violating the Administrative Procedures Act. They have acted beyond their statutory authority. They have evaded the notice and comment rulemaking requirements of the Administrative Procedure Act, which is quite funny because the current administration just accused, just yesterday, accused Binance of doing the exact same thing, evasion, though not of the Administrative Procedures Act, of other statutes and regulations. The agencies have acted arbitrarily and capriciously by denying access to the banking system to, to new technologies they do not understand. I love this. This... Uh, kind of elite law firm is accusing the current administration of not understanding the technology they are so capriciously regulating. Why would the government force a solvent bank into receivership while engineering a rescue package for a different bank that was hopelessly illiquid? They're pointing out the different treatment here of Signature Bank and Silicon Valley Bank. Silicon Valley Bank gets saved because I assume there are probably a lot of people with money in that bank who are contributing to the party of the current administration, whereas the crypto community, crypto uh, companies, probably not, aside from FTX, of course, probably not contributing a lot to that party, probably contributing to the other party. Congress should perform its duties and rein in these regulatory abuses exactly. And they go through the, the uh, what is it, uh, six, seven points they, uh, the seven points they think that Congress should take action on. They say, finally, Congress should investigate whether bank regulators are acting to curtail private sector innovation to clear the field of competition for a federal cryptocurrency alternative. Obviously, that's what a lot of crypto thinks. I think it might also just be some kind of misguided effort to protect, protect the global reserve currency status of the U.S. dollar. But that also implicates the CBDC because I think they think that the path forward for the dollar as the global reserve currency is through that CBDC. But this is a fantastic memo. Somebody has either paid this law firm to, to produce this memo, which is what I'm guessing happened, or they have some kind of a, there's there's some kind of contingency of, uh, con or contingent rather, of giant crypto fans at the law firm. Either somebody's a giant crypto fan of the law firm and they wrote this memo, or more likely somebody paid this law firm to write this memo. But it's an excellent memo. It lays out all the case law that any of these any of these crypto companies need to challenge what's happened. It's also directed at Congress. It's giving Congress all of the case law they need to take to the current administration and say, hey, what's going on? It looks like there might be some unconstitutional things going on and some other violations of federal law going on here. Whoever paid for this memo, 
Thank you very much. If no one, I, I'm, I'm assuming someone paid for it. If no one paid for it, thank you to Cooper and Kirk. Even if they got paid for it, thank you to Cooper and Kirk for writing this memo. If you feel so inclined, this would be a great memo to send to your representatives in the House of Representatives if you're in the US or to your senators in the Senate. You can, Charles gave the same instructions on his video today. You can just print out these 37 pages, shove it in an envelope, send it, send it to your congressperson's office, send it to all of them, send it to all of your Congress people. You know, write a little note, say you're extremely concerned about the unconstitutional actions of the current administration, send this over to them and then give them a call, give them a call. Like, you know, the, the, the day after it arrives in their office, ask them, Hey, did you see the memo I sent to you? Um, you know, tell them, tell them they're they're They are your representative in the U S Congress and you'd like them to take a look at this. You'll get a staffer or something, but ask the staffer to read it. If you feel so inclined, that would probably be a great thing to do to counter what, according to Cooper and Kirk, are a lot of unconstitutional actions by the current administration. Again, thank you to whoever paid what was undoubtedly a monstrous legal bill for a document this big from such a prestigious law firm. Whoever did this is definitely some kind of hero of crypto, but I hope you're having a great week and I'll talk to you tomorrow.